another Orchid Chores Diary. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you're doing well wherever you are in your part of the world. Thank you for taking the time to stop whatever you're doing and participate in my chores with me. <laughs> That's very much appreciated. Before we get to the chores, because, you know, chores, fruits of labor, da -di da they're here in my blooming alley. And currently in bloom, we have Lelia Pacavia down there. Then we have Dendrobium Hibiki starting his performance over there. We have Phalaenopsis Tabasco Tex over there in bloom, still smelling gorgeous. Up there, just opened up the blooms, is Dendrobium Sutkinoi. Over there, I have my Prostechia Cochleata Varilancifolia perfuming my blooming alley with an amazing fragrance of honeysuckle over taking the Tabasco Tex and the Sweet Memory that has one itty bitty little bloom left over there. And Celia Africana blooms are fading. Super interesting though, as they fade their petals and sepals, what was before a bright yellow are turning green before they fall off. Very interesting, just as a side note. We also have Lelia Zip still in bloom over there. Phalaenopsis Pinkton Bronze Age in bloom over there. <laughs> and down here we have Catlia Siamese Doll Kiwi also still in bloom for another couple of days at best. Not to forget my beautiful Coilostylus Parkinsoniana the two blooms that are there and then I've got the next two blooms opened a couple of days ago up there. In bloom still but some blooms are on their way out I have my goodness Dendrobium unicum even as the blooms fade they hold on forever. Dendrobium victoria regina I've lost a bloom on that one so we're towards the end of it I believe. Then Dendrobium bensonie yonder and blooms fading fast on the polyanthum right over there. So that is the fruits of our labor, but we have orchid chores on the daily. And today I'm going to take you along for the ride when I'm cleaning up pseudobulbs. And goodness me, quick slap on my hands. How can I forget? <laughs> Epidendrum multiforme crossed with Capricorn Nu is now blooming as well on its spike. Very difficult to see. I will put a picture up so that we can see the blooms because they literally do disappear with all the green and white that they have. And <laughs> you see a lot of white and green in my blooming alley as well. Anyway, these are the fruits of our labor. Labor meaning there's orchid chores to be done. And today I'm going to be focusing on removing removing dead pseudobulbs from orchids that have them while the orchid is still in the pot. But it's not just a matter of cutting away randomly. Some are easier than others. I have an example with my Coilostylus ciliaris variety or steady eye, and I'll talk you through what I will cut off and why I don't cut others off. And then we'll go to some really simple ones. Another chore that I would like to document and go through with you today, take you along, are my Dendrobium of Film Cakeys. Currently, I've got Cakey Propagation Watch. There's a lot of daycare <laughs> in my Cakey Baby Nursery. I want to propagate as many as I can, keep the roots alive. And I have two that need to be mounted on the monster mount that is a long-term project so that one day we can enjoy the curtain of a film blooms eventually but we need the material we need the product to be on that mount so that that can happen if you're so inclined to join me for the rest of the video thank you so let's get to work Oh boy, somebody's gonna get mad at me if I don't mention them as well as in. Renanthera Monachica is gonna get really mad at me for not pointing out that she is still in bloom as well over there. Especially seeing as I'm so lucky to still have her after the horrendous spring and didn't know that could have been an issue in the crown, but she's growing out of it. So that, I believe, covers all of them. Now let's get to work. Here is my Coilostylus or Steady Eye. Ta-da! In your face! Gorgeous! And there's two more up there. Woohoo! Light training is working a treat. But let's not get distracted. <laughs> that is so easy to do in this hobby. Any kind of distraction and you're... At least I am off the beaten track. <laughs> All right. 
So we have several dead pseudobulbs in here for several different reasons. And that's why I think this is a perfect example that we can attack and see if we can't get some grooming done. Now, I don't cut off my pseudobulbs at the point where they go yellow. I wait for them to completely desiccate. If there's any energy that the orchid can recover from the pseudobulbs that are going to be dying anyway, then I let her do that. So here we have an example of an old pseudobulb right at the back of the rhizome. As we can see, excuse me, Leaf, just a moment. As we can see right up here is the rhizome and we can go up and it's at the end of that rhizome. So this one we are going to take off with a pre-sterilized pair of secateurs or see how tight that space is? A pre-sterilized pair of pruners or snips. Now, when they are this desiccated, there shouldn't be that much resistance, making it also so much easier to take something a little less invasive, like secateurs of that size, and then we can just cut them off. End of the rhizome, it's done its job. Thank you for your service. So let's give this a little spin here. We have another pseudobulb right here. You can very, very clearly see how that is also at the end of a rhizome. And that is also pretty easy then just to take off. Spent pseudobulbs are woody and they can be quite tough. So that's why I got my secateurs out just in case I'm meeting some resistance without having to damage or intervene or jiggle my orchid around too much. Anyway, end of the rhizome, spent pseudobulb. Thank you for your service as well. Now, Usually you don't have to be sterilizing your secateurs if you are working with dead material. There is no transmission of pathogens because everything is dried out. There is no wet tissue left. It's also another reason that makes it a little bit safer to be doing these kinds of cleanup and prune up chores when everything is dried out. Best practice, of course, is to sterilize your cutting tools with alcohol or any other method, be it by heat, by a flame, between every single cut. I know my orchid. She is okay. She doesn't have any kind of issues. I've had her now almost four years. Never showed me any funky signs of something going on. So we're good to go. And that is why I am not sterilizing between every cut that I make on this orchid. The next orchid I address, even though I'm dealing with dry pseudobulbs, I will be sterilizing my tools because I'm still wary of it's possible I cut into a pseudobulb and all of a sudden in the rhizome there's still some green tissue. But not in this case, in case you're wondering. All right, now here we have... Let's hope that the sun isn't blocking this out. Let me get you in position so we can have a close, close look. Here we have a set of pseudobulbs right here. This one, this one, and then on the same rhizome, we have two live pseudobulbs. And then we have this one right here, dead. But you can see there's a growth coming. Their rhizome is still alive. Now, this is a result of cold damage. It was a new lead. That is why these more tender pseudobulbs did not stand a chance during my winter and spring of 21-22. So they suffered immensely with the cold and the damp air and there was no respite and even my airflow was very cold and damp. So these died back because of that. Back in the day, while I was watching these pseudobulbs desiccate and go yellow, I kept touching them to make sure that they're not going squishy or starting to smell on me because once there is odor, that means it's a bacterial rot and it can quickly spread to the rest of the orchid. So watching the pseudobulbs was paramount and I left them because everything was looking fine and I was hoping that this new lead would recover and then continue to grow and it has. So what we can do here is get in and take off what is around the pseudobulbs that are alive and snip off what has died. Thank you for your service. Thank you for not destroying my growing point. And we can do that going back further. And now if I don't like this angle, if I'm not comfortable with it, I will turn it around and give myself a better access point because I would like to keep this orchid going with as many leads as possible so that I get as many growths as possible and eventually I will also get a stunning blooming like I had last year. 
So now we're in a bit of a tight squeeze, but you can see how the new lead, the rhizome is still alive and the dead pseudobulb is coming out of the base. And that is what I want to protect and just cut above that base. So let's get in there from the top down. And if you don't get all of it, don't worry about it. I know that sometimes it is much nicer to get as close as possible to the rhizome if we're gonna be grooming our orchids we really want to do good cleanup, but we want to maintain the health of the rhizome and not poke into it or cut into it if we can avoid it. Thank you for not taking out the rest of the rhizome and for your service. Let's see, that one's a little bit lower. Let's dig around a little bit just to make sure where we are going to be cutting in. Now you can see how buried this pseudobulb is. And you're probably saying, well, that rotted out because it's so buried, lecker, water retention, humidity, etc. And there is some truth to that. However, for the fact that it is one of the older pseudobulbs right in the back of the new lead, I also have a very, very dry top layer in my climate. So the combination of winter being damp, etc., not enough airflow to dry things out, my lecker having buried this pseudobulb will have had an effect on this pseudobulb. However, it's not rot because once again, I didn't smell anything untoward at the base of the orchid. And yes, I know I'm weird like that. I put my nose into pots and around the rhizome just to be on the safe side. It's an activity I do very often during the winter. <laughs> but the pseudobulb is not rotting the rhizome. So we can consider that it's just because it was old. Left-handed, will this work? I do want to remain in shot. Yes, it will. There we go. And let's just have a look-see and also thank this pseudobulb for its service. Now we have one more left. The orchid is already looking so much better. We have one more left tucked in back here. There we go. This one is also an older pseudobulb from a new lead. So I hope you can see that. Right here, a ver. Okay, so this is a new lead, a new eye grew out. And here is the rhizome going all the way here, continuing to grow. And here is the first growth from that eye that swelled. And that is okay. It has done its job. Nothing wrong with the rhizome. It is still a little bit wet. Not quite desiccated. It feels a little bit on the soft side, but you can see if it makes any sense at all, you can see it's a hard softness. This is natural desiccation. This is not rot. If this were rot, I wouldn't be able to press into it the way I'm doing now without my finger slipping off and seeing some oozing orange smelly kind of liquid coming out. This is hard. It is only desiccating and I could have left it until it completely dried out, but I don't want to seeing as I'm at it and seeing as I'm showing you examples and also because now it's dry enough I don't even have to put cinnamon on that wound because lots of airflow is helping me keep everything nice and dry. That area will dry out pretty, pretty quickly. I'm just exposing the bottom sheath just because now I can get access to it and I don't want any pests to infest this orchid in any way, shape or form because she is one heck of a happy sap producer and soon she's gonna start on her roots and I would like those roots to develop nicely because they develop during the hottest month of my year, which is August. Here we have Lelia purpurata variety back Heuseri striata. Okay, part of orchid chores is sometimes weeding. <laughs> okay, so what you see here are seedling bulbs, all right? Now, you can see that we have four little ones in the back that are completely desiccated. And then there's another seedling bulb, lost the leaf, and it's, you know, <laughs> very tempting to remove that as well. My intention is not to cut into a healthy rhizome. My intention is just to get the dried seedling bulbs in the back off the orchid, just to give it a little bit of a prettier look, because we can. So it is so tempting to go all the way in here or all the way over here, right, to get all the ones that are leafless off 
But I am so cautious about doing these things that, you know, we're trying to just get the dead off and we're gonna stick with that plan. So I'm going to cut into here first and see if I manage to do that. Very, very woody rhizome, but it is a healthy one. So what you see is not any kind of a ring or anything. This is completely dyed. It's nothing, there's no substance in here anymore. And sometimes orchids that have like a purpurata that has the anthocyanin in their petals and sepals that give us that gorgeous color, they will also have dubious looking brown marks or rings in their rhizome making us freak out and think oh my goodness this orchid is living with fusarium that is not the case so this is not fusarium let's go back and get this out and see what we're up against just a nice piece of wooden rhizome and that would be it even though <laughs> one is tempted to go even further but seeing as they're still green, that means the rhizome is also still got substance in it. So I'm not touching those. Better be safe than sorry, in my opinion. If you would like another example, stick around. Otherwise, timestamps for the keikis, that is in the description. Another example, Brassolelio cattleya, golden celle. And you can see, as with the previous example, there are some bulbs that are spent in the back. They are completely spent. And we're going to go in as well. You also see how buried they are. Once again, with my dry top layer, that is not a problem. I did a video actually about burying your rhizome and pseudobulbs one leco diameter deep and why that works and why it will not affect even a new growth coming out. So these are spent pseudobulbs just because of their age and not because of their rot. Sniff test during the winter. <laughs> But uh, we're gonna get them out. Anyway, I'll link that uh, video about dry top layer or burying your rhizome in the description. While I try to fish for the roots of my fern here, let's see if we can be successful. And in the same time, drag out old roots. Well, there you go. Talk about being effective. <laughs> totally unintentional, but here we are. Okay, let's see. Let's get ourselves a visual of what we are up against. And we have uncovered another little pseudobulb down there. And we can still go in a little bit further. And there goes my timer for my RO water. But I have 20 minutes leeway before I have to address that bucket. Because one hour doesn't fill a bucket. It takes a little bit more. So I've got time. I'll be okay. I just must not forget and get carried away with what I'm doing. Because otherwise it will spill over and I want to avoid that. Okay, no need to unpot the orchid. Of course, if I were to be unpotting, all this would be part and parcel of the repot, the cleanup, etc. That is not necessary. This orchid is okay in the pot for another year, but I really don't want to look at these dead, blackened pseudobulbs in the back here. There is no need. Well, one just popped off like that. Hey, hey, that makes life easy. Now we can focus on not just the pseudobulb, please, but also on how deep do we have to go and where's the rhizome? Now, seeing as that one popped off so easily, hmm, I wonder if you can see that. I'm going in at an angle, also because the rhizome is going to be woody, at least I hope so when I get to it. Come on. I need to make sure that my secateurs are not going to cut through Lekka or <laughs> I'll either break my wrist, carpal tunnel and all that business, or break my secateurs, but I think we're good to go. Okay, let's try and stay in shot. So we're just going to go in. There we go. This is wet because of the wet leka down there, not because it's rot. So I'm just double checking now, I'm seeing purple here. This is concerning, this is concerning, because I didn't use any purple dye or anything to have this happen. The orchid seems to be living with fusarium. Let me take a picture of this and uh, I'll continue with the video. Before I forget and get carried away with my keikis, 
I'm sterilizing my tools, my pruners. The project of more pseudobulbs at this stage is not going to progress. I have a few others, but we've seen the examples, what to look out for. Everything is now gonna get sterilized because if that is what I think it is, and I think it is what I think it is, the F-bomb, then this orchid, not that I can separate her out of the collection, she is living with it, but it is very, very important now to make sure that whenever I address this orchid that she will not be touching anything in between any chores. So an orchid can live with Fusarium. She blooms beautifully for me every single year, but that doesn't mean that another orchid probably won't be able to handle it. And that is why this was uh, very, very interesting. I'm glad I got it on camera because it'll save me any long explanations in the future. See that? In comparison to the Lelia purpurata variety Beckhäuseri that just had a brown ring, this is for me as clear as day, the F-bomb. And it's good to know, a bit of a shocker, a bit of a surprise, not gonna lie, she has not shown any signs or symptoms of being affected with the F-bomb. Before I touch anything else now, I am going to be sterilizing my hands, and it's a good a time as any to get on with the keikis. But check this out, the orchid is looking fine, all right, all the growths have performed beautifully. They've never lost their size, even the latest growth right here. We still have the right, the same size pseudobulbs. The new growth is looking amazing. And of course, now I'm going to be really watching it when it comes to the root production. Now you may say, well, you've just cut the rhizome. This orchid is now in stress and she's going to collapse. If she's going to collapse, it's not because I cut into the rhizome, because I cut into dead tissue. I didn't cut into live tissue. That could have been a form of stress. This orchid is under observation and we shall be updating to see how she progresses. Right now, she's okay. She's living with Fusarium. Right now, I'm that much smarter about this orchid. And right now, from today onwards, now that I know, I am going to be so much more vigilant with this one in conjunction with my other collection. She was not part of the shipment that came with my Fusarium infected orchid, the Francis Fox that I lost. She came from a completely different nursery and maybe she is affected by the other one or how that worked out, I do not know. Fact is, we see it, we know it's there. Now we have to act accordingly. So let's use this in between orchid chores as a quick teachable moment. If you are interested how to sterilize your tools after you've discovered Fusarium, there's many different ways to do it. I would prefer to have like a Bunsen burner that I could just put a hot flame on and just let it cook and get red hot as best as possible. I don't have that available and I don't wanna be messing around in the kitchen haphazardly with tools and flames. Heat is perfect. If you don't have heat, Fisan 20 also will sterilize your tools and you can wipe everything down. I mean, everything you've possibly touched. That included my camera equipment, my tripod, everything I just touched, I can wipe down with Fisan 20, as you would soak an orchid if you found Fusarium to kill the spores and the start of it and hopefully get the orchid to recover. Or you can use bleach. I go with a 50-50 concentration and this is bleach. I didn't get my Faisan out because bleach for me is just the nuke it all of nukes when it comes to sterilizing on situations like that, including my hands. And let's say I touched a bucket that I just had in the sink. I have wiped that down with this 50-50 solution of bleach and water as well. Everywhere that I moved, prior to coming out here and doing a little bit of a Fusarium intermission, <laughs> everything has been wiped down. Talk about distraction, and we were just talking about getting distracted by blooms. Well, here we are. So I'm soaking these. It doesn't matter how long, an hour, 20 minutes, it doesn't really matter. Bleach is almost an instant killer. And you're probably thinking, well, your tweezers are sticking out halfway. Trust me, they have been lying down in bleach. This is just for demonstration purposes. I literally laid them down in their own Tupperware before doing this little intermission. So these are sterilized. I just wanted to show you that this is what you can do. And then 
observe your orchid and at least now for example if something were to go wrong with my brasso lelio cattleya golden cellar then I won't be umming and eyeing about what is wrong so am I a little bit shocked yeah because at the point my mind was racing what about the rest of my collection because this orchid wasn't in that shipment but now I'm sort of like que sera sera whatever will be will be we can only do what we can do from here moving forward now that we know get those tools sterilized and trust me i'm not cutting any orchid with these tools until tomorrow usually it takes me about 48 hours to recover from something that was unexpected like the f-bomb but you know if i have to get into an orchid tomorrow these are the tools i've got and i will be using them right on to the keikis my goodness poor little things Whew. I wanted to get this done much quicker, but needs must. I hope that you can see all my cute little babies growing here. Little Ephilim babies. Now they're also growing roots. And of course, I don't have enough humidity to maintain these roots. So this is what I do to cultivate the babies, keep the roots alive. I miss them at least three times a day. On very windy days, I'm out here every hour on the hour doing this. I also miss the remainder of the cane so that water can keep dripping, saturating everything. So these are the future and they will be on the monster mount when they are mature enough, maybe later in the season. But right now I kind of am hoping that the roots will hold on. If I see the roots decline at any point in time, I will be cutting off part of the cane and pinning them to the mount because I can keep much more humidity around the roots on the mount than if they're dangling away, exposed to the breeze and such dry air. So yeah, this is my little keiki nursery <laughs> and this is daycare. So these are the keikis of class of 2021. <laughs> All on this mount right now and they are also growing their own little keikis, which I also address on the daily, just to make sure we don't lose any roots. Now, these are also keikis of the class of 2021 and you're saying, well, they look different. They never lost their leaves and you are absolutely right. Still, they were harvested in 2021 just at a later stage and they didn't have enough roots by the time they were big enough and I was afraid I was going to lose them as fall approached. So I took them off the mother plant and I just cultivated them in a little bit of a fancy glass high-tech jar <laughs> just to keep humidity around the base so that they would progress and they progressed beautifully and each one of them is now already progressing with its new growth. And can you believe it? They also bloomed for me while they were indoors and didn't have all this radical temperature change that all these keikis had to deal with and they still bloomed while the leaves were on. So I'm going to be positioning this keiki onto the mount a little bit over there. And we're going to talk about why I'm doing this now, seeing as we're almost into the hottest months of the year, shouldn't I be protecting them a little bit longer? Let's get this done and talk about it. All right, first of all, let's get it into position so that I <laughs> don't go umming and eyeing and don't have much dead air in my commentary. Just make sure that I have a position I'm happy with. And that looks about right. Looks good to me. And I'm going to just pin her on before starting with some commentary. Otherwise, it'll be like me concentrating and there's gaps in my speech and I just poked a leaf with my needle so yeah let me just get her positioned and we can have a little chat There we go at least the class of 2021 has a complete and utter reunion now of course i will be hoping to grow the new growth of these keikis on i may lose the roots from this growth right here the first keiki 
because of desiccation. Of course, I'm going to try and avoid that. The hob material is going to help me to buffer against the dry air that these roots are not accustomed to. They are going to have to stay wet a lot longer. And I've got my work cut out for me to make sure that this hob material very rarely dries out in comparison to the other ones that are already kind of hardened off and their new roots are growing into the hob material that I put there last year. You can see the roots there. So that's all working out now perfectly. They're getting more and more established. These guys being so tender, gosh, even their canes are so soft in comparison to these guys, but they'll be okay. And I'm gonna put this mount up now where it belongs and then we'll wrap this whole thing up. I'll talk to you why I'm doing it now in July and the driest, hottest weeks are coming up, but there's method to my madness. The mount is back in position. And yes, I'm going to have a great time keeping these roots wet and hopefully tidying them over. One of the keikis is already growing its own new roots. We're going to be okay. The first one I pinned on, yeah, I've got my work cut out until that new growth starts its new roots. So two things. I've positioned them very, very low, like in the lowest tier, because I'm hoping that our new keikis, the nursery that we have currently going, are going to be much easier to pin on top of the ones that I already have pinned. My natural inclination is to pin them on the top, but that would be senseless. It's just going to be even more of a fiddle when the class of 2022 joins this mount. Secondly, this time of year is the best time, even though it's the driest time because of the angle of the sun. These keikis, the new ones, have not seen direct sun except for the occasional winter spring sun. They have not been exposed to anything remotely light-wise direct sun like their classmates over here have. They've been living on this mount since they were taken off the mother plant and have endured their first winter and have obviously lost their leaves. And they've had bright light direct sun hit them through the time of year where the angle of the sun is much, much lower in the sky. So they are completely hardened off. Not the case with these two. The hardening off process starts now while they are in permanent shade, exposed to super bright light, and then hopefully by the time the angle of the sun drops in the sky and they get hit with direct sun, the new growth won't have that scorching on the leaves, making them drop prematurely. That is the plan. Whether the original cakey piece will get scorched leaves or not, well, you know what? All the leaves are going to drop anyway. But for the time being, I want them to photosynthesize. I want them to gain strength. And my goodness, I want them to harden off because they are wimpy in their texture compared to the rest of them, which are really, really a film strong. So fingers crossed for everything that happened here on the mount today and let's see how Brassolelio Cattleya golden cellar will fare in the future. I know that my hands still smell of bleach. That's fine. The only thing is I will be losing some nails because when I touch bleach without gloves as I did because I had to disinfect my hands, the nails are going to start popping off and that is annoying. Still, nails will grow back. What would be more annoying is if I lose the orchid. I appreciate it that you stayed with me to the end if you have and if you did thank you so very very much looking forward to updating you on the progress of class of 2021 as well as the progress of class of 2022 <laughs> it's been a bit of a breezy afternoon now i'm just going to grab the sprayer and give them another good hosing down i appreciate your time Thank you so very, very much for watching. Have yourselves a beautiful day on one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.